So what happens when religion is misinterpreted? When man applies their own logic unto God's word? Instead of just reading the word of God the way it is. Like the way it appears on the face of it. What happens? Cults. And what happens when cults are formed? Tragedy. This next story is the story of a cult and its leaders who took close to a thousand lives. Stay tuned. Hi. Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Afira Faith channel. I am Mayira, and if you are new to my channel, I am here to tell you that my content is mainly based on true crime and murder stories. So if you are a fan of true crime, murder stories, the dark, the gory, you or you're just interested or intrigued, I want to know what happened, where, when, how. I'm your girl please consider subscribing to my channel for those who have already subscribed thank you so much for your support and your continued patronage for those who have not yet subscribed and are new to this channel thank you as you click the subscribe button please also like and comment tell me what you think tell me what you know that i don't know tell me what i have missed and yeah so feel at home and uh, without further ado let's be Again. So, our story today is on cults. Um, of course, as many of you are aware, there have been cults all over the world in different countries, and um, they always end in tragedy, right? So today, I'm going to be specific about one um, central cult that is uh, um, the subject of my story today. And no, it's not the Kenyan cult, the present one, it's a Ugandan cult. This story happened um, almost 20, actually 23 years ago. 23 years ago, two months to the date. Yeah. Uh, so here we are. We meet Joseph Kibotere. This is in the 1960s. Joseph Kibotere was born in 1932, married in 1960. He's a pious Catholic. He's a primary school teacher. He held some political offices. He was a respected member of the community, society. He has 16 children. Um, him and his wife live comfortably. He runs a meal business. He has vehicles. He has... Uh, couple of properties so yeah this is a respected individual in the society uh plus like i said he's a very staunch and pious catholic so yeah so he's also a respected member of the of the church um marries in 1960 um in 1984 there were records that uh show that he had some kind of apparition or let's say some kind of vision about um mary the mother of Jesus, Joseph, and uh, Jesus himself. And he didn't consider this strange because, you know, he's a pious Catholic and um, he's a very God-fearing man. So he took it as a sign from God, like, I approve, you are my son, and I want to use you um, on earth. So, yeah, that is in 1984. Um, a bit later, in 1989, um, he came across a lady. He came across a lady. Her name was Credonia Mwarinde. Credonia and her father Paul had um, also had this kind, these kinds of uh, visions. They claimed to have apparitions and visions about again the Virgin Mary, about Jesus and Joseph. And uh, Credonia actually came to Joseph uh, Kibotere and told him, you know what, Joseph? I have had a vision that uh, the Holy Mother, that is Jesus' mother, Mary, lives in a cave, is in a cave, not lives, is in a cave uh, near your home. And uh, the Holy Mother has sent me to you and told me you are anointed 
and supposed to take me and my father in as part of uh, the church of christ so i don't know if joseph was gullible or was just such a pious and staunch catholic that he automatically believed her but one thing or the other led to him believing her so of course automatically she was in the house i remember i reading uh, one of um, joseph's sons say that it was a shock to them because this is a strange woman and uh, the first time his father was meeting her and she says she's had a vision from uh, mary mother of jesus he's supposed to take her and her father in um and because he he has been anointed as a uh, part of um their sect their real, little sect because she she and her father had um a sect like a christian sect i'm saying christian in quotes because these are not real christians real christians do not do what i'm about to tell you they did so christians in quotes so they had this little group with of, of theirs and um, he was apparently supposed to join them and help them in their journey of uh, ministering to the people of God. So a strange woman came into his house, started living with his kids and his wife. And Matthew, Credonia was a prostitute, a former prostitute. She said she was a reformed prostitute. She used to be a barmaid. Uh, she, she used to work the streets. And uh, imagine bringing this kind of woman in your house with your wife. Oh my God, uh, I'm sure it, it was a very difficult situation for Joseph's wife. But, you know, here's the man of the house. He's decided, he said, this is what God wants. And so this woman is in my house. And the son says immediately, Credonia started disciplining them. He used, she used to really beat them as if she was their mother. She used to really can them. And, and she was a very crude and very rude person. And of course, in any marriage, such a, such a, a situation would bring tension here and there. So, of course, Joseph started having problems in his marriage and uh, he would only listen to what Credonia says. He no longer valued or respected the opinions of his wife. He, he no longer slept with his wife in the same bed. Apparently, Mary, mother of Jesus, has told Credonia that sex was now prohibited from the moment she stepped foot into that house come on so of course the marriage was strained so in uh, i think it was she came in in 1989 in 1982 the wife was like i'm done this is it i don't want to live with you anymore i cannot do this anymore and she left so joseph was left there and Credonia was also there. The wife left with the kids. She was like, I'm gone. I'm done. Kaput. This is it. I'm out. So, of course, it's Joseph and Credonia. And Credonia also recruited more people into their sect. Um, and she did this mainly through visions. She used to claim she used to see visions from the Virgin Mary, visions about uh, Joseph, about Jesus. And most people were very gullible and actually believed her. And most of the people that she recruited at first were Catholic nuns and Catholic priests. Uh, so just to name a few people that she recruited to be leaders of, um, of that little sect of hers. So number one, it was Joseph Kibotere. He was the first victim. And then um, there is Credonia Morinda, of course, herself. There was Angelina Mugisha. Then there was Father uh, Joseph Kasupurari. And then there was Father Dominic Katiribabo. These are Ugandan names, Ugandan names, so I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing them correctly. Please bear with me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, those five were the leaders. Uh, and I must mention Father Dominic was a very respected priest who had actually uh, studied in the U.S. and come back to... to um, to Uganda, he had written so many uh, theological uh, books and books on religion and the Bible and Jesus and um, the Holy Communion. So he was a very respected priest. And when he joined this sect to say, um, people kind of, it drew people's attention to that because this is someone who is very respected and he's drawing, he's drawing attention to such a small group. There must be something there. So 
it kind of encouraged more people to join. People followed him. Um, so in 90, first of all, in 1991, Credonia's father, Paul, died. And when he died, Joseph officially took over the mantle and became the head of the church. Although some reports say um, Credonia was really the, the mastermind. She was really the one behind everything because it was her visions, the visions that she claimed she had that um, drove the whole cult thing because she used to tell people I have visions of this and this and that and uh, Jesus says you should do this and this and that and people used to believe her so Joseph was just like um, a proxy head you know um, just a face for the people because he was a man so they needed that masculine energy so yeah 1991 Kidonia's father died Joseph takes over um, officially they started their cult in Joseph's home and um, village elders at some point realized that there's something going wrong. There's something amiss here. And they decided to kick them out of that place. They told Joseph, you know what? We don't believe what you're doing or what you're teaching. Um, and so we, we do not want this kind of teachings around our kids. And therefore, we want you out. Get out of this area. We don't want you in this village. So um, Credonia had uh, inherited a land in Kanungo, a piece of land in Kanungu from her father so they moved there they moved the cult there and they actually made it the headquarters and actually came up with a bomber or um a camp it was a big big piece of land it's a lot of acres a very beautiful place by the way and they actually erected a camp there and it became um their headquarters so in 1994 they actually registered the the sect and they registered it as a church and the name was the restoration of the Ten Commandments of God. That was the name of the church. They also registered a boarding school for kids. Uh, but uh, the re license for the boarding school was withdrawn in 1998 amid claims of teachings that were against the Constitution and violation of public health policies and also mistreatment of children. So in 1994, they now registered officially as a church and then started their practice, their own religious practice in Kanungu, that area. So, of course, they were calling the, themselves Catholics because the leaders of the church were nuns and priests. And by the way, Joseph had 12 disciples, just like Jesus, 12 disciples. But in this case, it was six women and six men. Uh, the six women were included because, I mean, the whole church was born through visions from the Holy Mother. Mary, uh, mother of Jesus, so they had to include women in their discipleship. So he had 12 disciples, he was the head, and uh, the other four, Angeline, the other Joseph, Dominic, and Credonia, were heads alongside with him. So they started life in Kanungo, they recruited more and more people, they attracted more and more people. So anyway, this is 1994. The cult is established it is named they have a compound they have a lot of recruits they have priests they have nuns and by the way the roman catholic church renounced those priests and renounced those nuns they were like we don't know you we do not um associate with what you're teaching we think what you're teaching is wrong we think you're misleading um your your flock or you're misleading the people so we disassociate ourselves with you we distance ourselves with you the the um fathers were defrocked the nuns were also defrocked and they were ordered not to wear the, the hobbits the nun hobbits the dressing that the nuns wear the uniform and the priests were asked please do not wear those robes but they still carried themselves out as nuns and priests of the catholic church even though the catholic church distanced themselves from them so yeah people were attracted to the cult and um just to tell you a little bit of how the cult was living and when i was researching on this story i realized there was so much um similarities in this cult i i read uh, on about uh, four or five cults from all over the world the american one the kenyan one the ugandan one different kind of cults but they their modus operandi the mode of operation is always the same always always the same so i came up with some five pointers that these cults use to control these people number one 
isolation and separation. For this cult, that is the restoration of the Ten Commandments of God cult, once you join the cult, if you're a family, you come in as a family, the children and the parents are separated. The children are taken elsewhere to stay, to live in a camp for children and the adults in another camp, although it's in the same compound, in another camp. I think this was also to discourage the parents from changing their minds and wanting to return home. And you know, you can't return home without your kids because they're in a different place and you never see them. So you're like, if I leave, I can't live without my kids. So it kind of grounds you there. It puts you in the same place. Mm -hmm. So first, that there was separation of families. Number two, the complete isolation of the relatives and friends that you had outside. You are not allowed to speak to anyone outside. You cut ties completely. Completely. They are not allowed to visit you. You are not allowed to visit them. Once you join the cult, you are there forever. You are in that compound forever. No living. No talking to anyone in the outside. You are no longer related to anyone in the outside. You no longer know anyone in the outside. No. And then there was physical separation between the cult and the outside world. There was like huge tall fences that were made of tough materials like bricks and tough wood that would separate the cult compound from the external world. Yeah, and the, the cult leaders used to encourage you, before you come here, please make sure you've paid all your taxes. Please make sure you've paid all your debts. You know why? Because they don't want people to come looking for their money and then come into the cult compound and then realize, wait a minute, what's happening here? Things are not right here. I need to say something or I need to do something. And then the jig will be up. So... Finish all your days. Mutas kuja kutafusa. Akisema, hey, nimefata elfu mbili yangu. Ama elfu tatu. Nataka pesa zangu. No. Finish your debts before you come in. Pay your taxes. They don't want the government nosing around. They don't want the police. They don't want the government nosing around. Nothing. They want to be in complete isolation. And they want to isolate you because they want to ruin your life. They want to teach continue teaching the wrong teachings and continue brainwashing you in peace so that no one interferes them that is the one the, the first characteristic the second one um maintained ignorance once you join the cult your kids do not go to school no one was allowed to lead, read even the bible the bible was only read by the cult leaders they read the bible and then translate it for you the bibles that were in that camp were only read by the cult leaders joseph credonia the other joseph angeline dominic and the other the 12 disciples no one else was supposed to read mm -hmm. so this gives them an opportunity to misinterpret the texts of the bible they interpret it the way they want and then they just tell you this verse means this and you know you're brainwashed so what do you do you listen to them so no one was allowed to read sorry and no one was uh, allowed to even talk. Uh, I read somewhere um, they said um, they were using sign language and were not allowed to talk because they didn't want to break God's commandments. That is their false witnesses. Um, and that's commandment number, the, the, the Ten Commandments say no other God to worship. Do not make yourself idols, is them in vain. Remember the Sabbath, honor your father and mother. Do not kill, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness and do not covet. The ninth, sorry, I had to do that. As <laughs> I remember, oh my God. Yeah, the ninth commandment. So they were not talking because they do not want to risk um, the wrath of God by breaking the, the ninth commandment. So it was only sign language, no reading, except for texts that were written by Father Dominic and were spread and distributed within the camp. Nothing outside, nothing outside the camp was supposed to be read. Only what the prophets, there are no prophets, sorry, the cult leaders gave you to read. That's number two. Number three, financial dependence. Once you get there, you sell all your property off. You sell everything off. You pay all your debts. If you have cows, if you have land, if you have property, everything. Sell it off and the proceeds were taken to the cult leaders. So you sell everything 
and all the proceeds are given to the cult leaders. They hold it for you. I don't know if it's in trust or for what. I don't know. But they hold it for you. Yeah. So, you know, right now you're helpless. You depend on them 100%. Your kids and yourself for food, for shelter, for clothing, for health. And, of course, by the way, they never used to go outside. For If you get sick, you don't go to the hospital. They treat you themselves with traditional herbs and stuff. So, you depend on them for 100% everything. So, which means you're helpless. You have nowhere to run to if, if you want to leave. You have nowhere to go because you have no money. You don't have the means to leave financial dependence. The fourth one. I think this is number four. Yeah, it's number four. Uh, spiritual manipulation. They tell you, okay, or religious manipulation. One of, okay, their main doctrine, and this is the reason why they were called what they were called. They were called the restoration of the Ten Commandments of God, this cult. So, According to them, the world uh, had gone astray. Uh, the commandments of God were not being obeyed. Um, so the, the, the cult was actually formed so that um, its members can stand out from the rest of the world and be recognized by God as righteous people who um, enforced or um, followed um, God's instructions and actually... The Ten Commandments, that's why it was named the Restoration of the Ten Commandments of God. Yeah, And they promised their, 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 their members that, you know what, you will see heaven, you are going to see Jesus, you're going to see Mary, you're going to see Joseph, uh, you're going to be saved. And actually, they said, this is Credonia actually, this is Credonia, no one else. It's Credonia who said this. Credonia said that she had a vision. She had a vision uh, that the world was going to end in, sorry about that, that the world was going to end on 31st December 1999. So that 1st January 2000 will be a new year. This, she says that she had a vision and so um, rivers of fire, rivers of blood, a hurricane of fire, decapitated people um she saw snakes drop from heaven snakes as huge as tire trucks uh tractor tires that thick big snakes and swallowed the sinners and the world is going to go dark for three days and she told the people please prepare and the other church leaders also claimed they had the same visions and they told the members please prepare 31st december 1999 is going to be your last day on earth we are going to heaven and everyone who is outside this camp is going to die. Everyone apart from you. We are going to be saved. So, if you still have property, please sell it off. Give the proceeds to the leaders of the church or of the cult. And then you'll be safe. Keep praying and keep living within the Ten Commandments. Fasting. Fasting. What is wrong with people with fasting? It was also starving. They were actually starving themselves. Keep fasting. Keep praying. And, and keep living the way we teach you to live. Keep living the way we teach you to live. So yeah, that was actually what they were using to manipulate people. They were saying, okay, you know what? This world is ending. You guys, if you live the way we are teaching you, you'll go to heaven. The rest will go to hell. And they used to use this to scare the hell out of everyone. So characteristics of a cult. Separation or isolation, total separation or isolation, maintained ignorance. They want to maintain your ignorance. You cannot open your eyes. You cannot learn anything from anyone else. They want to keep you stupid. And then, number three, financial dependence. If you don't have money, you don't want, you don't have anywhere else to go. Hmm? If you cannot support yourself, if you don't have the means to run away, then you stay put. Number four, spiritual or religious manipulation. You see, they manipulated these people. They gaslit them very badly. So anyway, ah, if you're wondering, 31st December came. You're not wondering because we are here, of course. 31st December 1999 came and went. There was no apocalypse. So, so 